Hi, I'm James with Curious, and I'm here with Chris Wilson, the Managing Director of Grinding Gear Games for Path of Exile. Many of you may recognize that uh, Path of Exile is an action RPG, but what makes it unique? The thing that we promote with Path of Exile above everything else is basically the character customization options that we have in the game. We feel that there are so many different ways that you can build your character, both with active skills, passive skills, and all the different items that you can get, that there are thousands and thousands of substantially different builds that you could make. What's the end game in this action RPG? So we've got a lot of different things that people can do at the end of the game. For a start, there's the actual end game. They can play on the high-level characters. That's the end game map system. And basically, you're getting randomized areas that you can find, uh, which have been itemized. And you can roll them to put properties on them, play them with your party, and try to get higher and higher tiers of those to get more experience and items. We're also looking at adding other parallel end games that you can play with your high-level characters. But there's more than just this. There's the PvP end game from the point of view of you know, trying to get your PvP rating up and making sure you have the ultimate PvP character in a variety of different brackets. There's going to be guild content and future free expansions. We've also got a lot of league events that we run frequently, so some people will just specialize in racing in the game rather than actually building end game characters. While we're on the subject of leagues, can you tell us about Cutthroat and what that is? That's kind of notorious within the game community, so why don't you give everybody at home an idea of what the Cutthroat League is? So basically in the Cutthroat League, now I have to stress this is an optional league that you don't have to play in, and it uses new characters. So we set aside part of the server space and everyone starts new characters in a Cutthroat League, and then they can basically invade each other's instances and kill each other, you know, full friendly fire, and take everyone's items. So you basically, as you kill someone, they drop all of the stuff they're using, which you can then pick up and use on your own character, and the players have really been engaging with this. And it's only maybe 5 or 10% of the community that is absolutely obsessed with it and emails me every day, but those people really want to play this mode. I can see myself getting into it. You also get experience from the player, right? They lose a certain amount of experience when you get it? That's correct. Yeah, I think it's 30% of a level, so it's pretty hefty. And this means that if you're good and killing enough other players, you can actually level up from it without having to fight too many monsters. Crazy. Speaking of crazy, let's talk about all the crazy builds. Because, the, you know, it's a kind of a hype word and like, oh, you can totally go past the cookie cutter and you can make a battle mage. Battle mage is the tip of the iceberg with this game. Um, if you've seen the passive skill tree, which I'm sure we will have a graphic of right now, it's totally crazy. People are making builds that you didn't even know could exist, correct? Yeah, that's right. We, like, we do this Build of the Week series that you may have seen, and the things we do there startle us each week in terms of unique builds that players have come up with. I mean, there's interactions we never have considered in the game. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Each week we make a video about an interesting Path of Exile character build that a player has submitted. This is the ninth video in the series, and features a level 73 marauder called Mike Tyson who can one-hit kill monsters by punching them. All right, let's talk about team play. Uh, how many members can be, well, I guess it is, it's almost an MMO. Can you uh, talk to us a little bit about the server structure and the phasing and how that works and how players are going to see their friends within game? So we have a limit of six people in any combat area at the moment. Now, this is violated in a few places, like we can have PvP that goes much higher. You know, we've played around with up to 32 players, for example, internally, and we have, um, in cutthroat areas, you can have up to 12 people. But the reason why we chose six for the instances that you're actually playing in is basically gameplay reasons. That's the level that it feels good at. That's the level the maps are designed for. That's about the number of entities you can track on screen, especially when they've got minions, and it gets really hectic with too many. So we're limiting it at six to help you, not to hinder you. From a technical point of view, it could go higher. I mean, our current technical limit is 32. We could expand that to 64 or 128 with a bit of effort, you know, a few days of work. But there'd have to be some kind of specialized event where it's appropriate to have that many people in one area. And the towns do hold more than six people. I think they go up to 32. It's kind of cool there are social zones. You can go in and see other people's gear and kind of show your own gear off, which is excellent. Um, so let's talk about how you're, because we mentioned this is free to play, how you're going to make money. Um, right now it's set up. You can go and purchase a Founders Package for anywhere from uh, 25 to $1,000. Uh, and for each tier, you're going to get more and more exclusive stuff. And, and at the top tier, do you want to explain what they get at the top tier? Sure. So in the Diamond Pack, for starters, they get $1,000 of actual microtransaction credit they can spend in the store. So their $1,000 is buying them $1,000 of points. But in addition, they get a pile of signed swag, you know, t-shirt, poster, a copy of the game on DVD, a soundtrack. That's all posted to you. The developers sign it if you'd like. You also get a custom forum avatar, which we'll make for you based on your specifications. And yes, it seems we are allowing nudity in those, according to one request we had recently. 
Um, and the most important, well, there were, there were two most important things here. The first one is the Diamond Kiwi, which literally has a beam of light that stretches into the sky. And some people buy it for that. They want the Diamond Kiwi. This is their only chance to get it, and it's going to be so iconic and important. Right. And those are summonable pets that are not in combat. Just kind That's of right. They're entirely cosmetic, and you know they can't be traded and so on. It's basically, if you want it, you have to buy it now. Hint, hint. And the, the other thing that's worth $1,000 to some people, in fact, this is something we're pulling out of this pack and probably making it $1,000 by itself without any credit, is the ability to design a unique item that goes in the game. This has been massively popular. We thought a couple of guys might be interested, but 183 people at this moment have, have bought it. Do so the far. math. Yeah, so that's, that's like more than 100 grand. <laughs> and, and there's quite a backlog of uniques that we're getting through, so we're making sure that we can deal with those as soon as we get an open beta. And we're pretty lenient, but we do have restrictions that you can't obviously use, you know, other people's property, you know. The lightsaber gets turned down for two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's sci-fi and it's someone else's trademark. <laughs> All right, so um, you're going to unveil that, that new gear at some point, but let's talk about unveiling new gear. Is there going to be additional content, maybe additional dungeons down the line to keep kind of the... I mean, obviously the longevity of this game is pretty enormous because you're going to be making new characters, you're going to be trying new specs, doing those random dungeons at the end, but, but what about far end game? Are, uh, are we looking forward to any kind of content updates in the future? Yeah, we've got quite a lot planned. There's So Act 3, which is being deployed with the open beta version um, on the 23rd, does contain a bunch of new content, and players will take a while to get through that. So we're planning Act 3X, as we call it, which is basically the areas we would have loved to include in Act 3 that add some extra quests, you know, including another end boss, perhaps, Ooh. which um, which should be kind of interesting. This is done in in parallel with the Act 4 development that we're working on, which of course takes a little bit longer to make. But we are planning big content updates like that. And of course there's the incremental addition of new items and a lot of new skills hopefully, because we're, we're looking at the current range of skills and saying this is kind of a borderline minimum, we'd love to double it. Well, I could talk about this game for hours, and uh, I will. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you, can, you really got to check it out for yourself. It's the only way to sift through that enormous uh, passive skill tree. At first I was like, this is ridiculous, but I looked at the skills, they're all very, uh, it makes you feel, I think like the, the smallest skill upgrade on there is 10 strength, which is actually quite a bit. So it, it makes you feel totally powerful and it's not this like 0.01% increase every level or something, but uh, there's skill gems. I guess we have to talk about the skill gems, don't we? I think so. Okay, fine. Well, the skill gems are these things you put in your, uh, your item and then it gives you that skill and then there's also support skills that why don't you just explain it? That'll be easier. Okay, so the skill gems, you can find them in the world or you can um, get them from quest rewards and we're planning on having some that are relatively difficult to find and so it's important that when you, you find them and you level them up that they have a lot of trade value to other players. Basically, uh, the support gems that you mentioned, they socket in uh, connected sockets next to the skill gems and augment the properties. For example, you can split up projectiles into multiple pieces or make them bounce around, you know, like pinball or have them fork when they hit enemies. You can imbue them into a totem that uses them on your behalf. You can put them in traps or remote mines. We're planning on having it so that you can give them to your minions. There's plenty of other things. That <laughs> cool. We have plenty of other things that we're hoping to do with that system. And I think at the moment there's about 110 gems possible. Um, you can connect up to six at once. So there's quite a lot of different combinations nations there. Maybe, maybe millions, so it's, it's yeah. a bit. I'm sure you've done the numbers and that's a, a, a buzzword for your campaign, but we got to wrap this thing up because it's been like 95 minutes. Um, I just, I actually just want to go home and play. Anyway, so the beta's open beta is coming out on January 23rd. Get the Founders Pack before then, and if you don't, well, you get to play anyway. It's free, and it's going to be an open beta, so it's kind of like a release. Um, so Chris Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you. And where can people go to find out more about the game? They can go to pathofexile.com and they can download it there. And the best thing to know about this is that this is the last character wipe we're ever doing. So, you know, we're not going to wipe it again at release later. This is the final one. So if you want to play, you should be playing next week. <laughs>